Good morning, Dr. Rob Kiltz. How are you doing today? Let's talk a little bit about uh, unknown, unspecified, idiopathic, unexplained infertility. Unexplained usually comes about when we do all our testing and we can't find an obvious source. The sperm count looks reasonably normal in volume, motility, concentration, and morphology. And the woman has regular menstrual cycles, which indicates she's likely having regular ovulation. And the hysterosalpingogram indicates that the fallopian tubes and uterus are reasonably in normal condition. And there's no obvious systemic diseases that may explain these problems such as autoimmune diseases, diabetes, or previous history of cancer, radiation, or chemotherapy. And the ovarian reserve is measured by a vaginal ultrasound to look at the resting follicle count. And with at least three to five follicles in each ovary in the five to eight millimeter range. This indicates likely the ovarian reserve is good along with an AMH, that's an anti mullerian hormone level of greater than one. But these in and of themselves don't tell us the full story. My experience is that inflammation or the immune system is probably the number one source of our fertility dysfunction. That means reduced chances of conceiving, implanting, and a significant increase in miscarriages. And it may even be related to spontaneous chromosomal abnormalities with DNA damage due to chronic or acute inflammation. Most of it is likely to be related to chronic inflammation. And some of these problems can be measured with antibody testing, looking at antithyroid antibodies rheumatoid factors or looking at C-reactive protein and then looking at many other cytokines and white cell dysfunction such as elevated natural killer cells or an endometrial sample biopsy or DNC to look at the pathology of the endometrial tissue to identify whether there's an excessive or abundant evidence of inflammation. The source of the inflammation is likely related to the food we eat, but our environment and the toxins of what we breathe, what we drink, and what we eat is probably number one, and stress is probably number two. But I'm saying probably because these are all speculative questions and answers. But I do know there is ample evidence to support that excessive amounts of carbohydrates, sugars, grains, fruits, fiber, and vegetables, along with milk products, can be very inflammatory to our bodies and increase the number of antigen antibody interactions and these white cells and cytokines that are enhanced in our body aren't specific in many cases to an area. You might feel it in your jo joints, in your skin, in your bowel, in your head, in your eyes and you may not even feel it at all, but you 
have a problem. And that's either repetitive pregnancy loss, failed implantation from IUI or IVF, or natural cycles, or simply not conceiving and there's no known cause. There's testing available, but it's not specific. And there are treatments available and also not specific to reproductive immune dysfunction. One area I've been spending a lot of time researching is related to the food we eat and the diets we've been consuming for thousands of years and most specifically over the last several decades where we've consumed excessive amounts of sugar and carbohydrates and eating grains, cereal, rice, pasta, bread, yogurt, milk, and fruits, vegetables, and fiber as if there's proven evidence of their benefits. And I'm going to tell you there's proven evidence of their harm. All of these things are converted to sugar in the stomach. All of these things create an excessive immunologic response that affects many parts of our bodies, most commonly the gut. The gut is the sinkhole. It's that area the body's working to cleanse the body to bring in certain and specific macromolecules. But we put so much variety into our body and so much sugar, and it's sugar in the form of wheat and rice and pasta and bread and vegetables and fruit and yogurt and milk and ice cream and soda and apples. It's amazing. This is an amazing concept and idea that simply shifting what you consume and increasing the fat, that saturated fat. And more recently, we've been using compounds, substances, medicines such as intralipids, which is made up of mostly soy protein and egg protein and soy fat and the fat seems to be the method for reducing the inflammation in our bodies and it's definite that we consume a low fat diet we eat a very high carbohydrate diet and carbohydrates are not even necessary to be consumed for health and wellness of our bodies fat and protein are all that's necessary and I would also argue that it's not the protein that we need in abundance, but the fat. The mitochondria of our cell, the powerhouse, needs saturated fat. That's beef fat, pork fat, even milk, butter fat, coconut fat. These are areas where we haven't really spent much time because we've had so much fear to fat because we think fat gets us fat, but in fact, it's simply fruits, fiber, vegetables, and grains, and milk get us fat. At CNY Fertility, we've been incorporating Eastern and Western medicine ideas, and more recently, we've been focusing much on our food plan, increasing the fat eliminating the carbohydrates, reducing significantly the carbs. Ketogenesis, keto adaptation, Ray Emmerich, and keto clarity, Jimmy Moore, and good calories, bad calories, Gary Tobbs, Wheat Belly, David Perlmutter. I should say Wheat Belly by William Davis and Grain Brain by David Perlmutter are resources that I highly recommend you begin to read, listen to, explore, and better understand why do you put all this in your body that they tell you is healthy, but in fact it's not. In fact, it's the source of our immunologic dysfunction and by going ketotic, ketogenesis, and or adding low-dose steroids, prednisone, 
intravenous immunoglobulins or intralipids. We've been also more aggressive with blood thinner called Lovenox, which probably has more of a effect on the immunologic response that is also responsible for blood clotting, which seems to be a factor when it comes to blood flow to the placenta to early implantation, and that is so important. We are idiots in some way. Idiopathic infertility is unexplained because we're not opening our eyes to the possibility. The truth is, it's likely all immunologic. The reason we're alive, the reason we get sick, the reason we die is related to our immune system. Let's open up to the possibility there's something more. We can do the testing to look at cytokines, to look at MTHFR factors, homocysteine levels, look at chromosomal possibilities, and then also focusing on general health and wellness diet incorporating Eastern medicine, yoga, acupuncture, massage, meditation, areas that reduce inflammation and helping incorporate natural fertility methods. Helping you, all of us, find our natural health and wellness. Supplements are okay, but why not consume a healthy, whole, organic foods and minimize the variety and you will find your health and wellness without all that excessive exercise opens up and you find yourself in that place of life that you wish to be. This is Dr. Robert Kiltz at CNY Fertility. That's R Kiltz, R-K-I-L-T-Z at cnyfertility.com. And text me at 315-416-9872 help you find and share a better way and also we've made IVF and your fertility journey more affordable and accessible than any place I know of God bless enjoy this day this is Dr. Rob Kiltz